Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us for today's information session. My name is Erin and I'll be your moderator for today. Today we're presenting information on the Wilkes University Online Associate Degree in Nursing to Master of Just a little housekeeping before we get started. This event is being recorded for future viewings. Only panelists are unmuted, so you can hear us, but we can't hear you. If you have any questions during the presentation, please type them into the chat box on your screen. We'll address your questions following the presentation during the live Q&A period at the end. Let's take a moment to go over our agenda for today's webinar. We'll be hearing from Dr. Kathleen Herthler, who will be introducing Wilkes University and give a brief overview of the online RN to MSN and MSN programs. Then we'll hear from Kelly Arison and Kelly Byrne, our admissions counselors here at Wilkes. They'll be taking you through the structure of the program and the three concentration tracks available for each. The admissions counselors will also discuss of the role of the student success advisor, how they'll support you once you've been admitted into the program, and how they stay with you throughout the entire student journey. We'll talk through the complimentary clinical placement services Wilkes has to offer, as well as financing your education. Then we'll share important dates for upcoming application deadlines for our next start date, and we'll go through that application process. We'll conclude this session today with our live Q&A and answer all of your questions. Let's get started now. Let's start with an introduction to the guest speakers that we have in our lineup today. We'll be hearing from Dr. Kathleen Herthler, the Graduate Nursing Program Associate Professor at Wilkes University. You'll also hear from Kelly Arison and Kelly Byrne. These ladies are the admissions counselors here for Wilkes, and they will be able to answer all of your questions concerning the RN to MSN and MSN programs. Good morning, everyone. My name is Dr. Kathleen Herthler, and I'm the chair of the Graduate Nursing Programs at Wilkes University. It brings me great joy to join you today and tell you about the Passon School of Nursing. As a nurse practitioner myself and a lifelong learner, I know it is a difficult time for those of you working in healthcare. Nursing is not just a profession. It's a calling, and the needs of the last year have been unlike any we've encountered in our lifetimes. I want to commend you for taking time to do something for yourself and learn how to advance your career, grow in a new specialty, and achieve your educational and professional goals. Wilkes University is a private university that was founded in 1933 in Northeast Pennsylvania. Though you're here to learn about our online programs, I am speaking to you today from our historic campus in Wilkesbury, where for nearly 90 years we have been educating graduate and undergraduate students for lifelong success. The Passon School of Nursing is a leader in educating nurses with a comprehensive suite of academic programs from bachelor's through doctoral levels that move the profession forward in practice and policy. Most notably, we offer convenient, in-demand NP programs to help you advance as a psychiatric mental health nurse practitioner adult gerontology, primary care nurse practitioner, or family nurse practitioner. Our nurse practitioner program is unique in that it offers entry for nurses with associate, bachelor's, or master's degrees. Going back to school is a big decision, but Wilkes offers the mentoring and faculty support you need to succeed. Our flexible format blended with a rigorous curriculum ensures that you are ready to advance as a nurse practitioner and excel in patient care. Thank you for joining us today. I look forward to reviewing your application and answering any of your questions. Thank you for that wonderful overview, Dr. Kathleen. Our robust Masters of Science in Nursing program has three concentrations, family nurse practitioner, adult gerontology, and psychiatric mental health. We provide students with three intakes per year, spring, which is traditionally our January term, summer, which starts in May, and fall, which is in August. Our semesters are 12 weeks in length, and students take on average two classes per term. Students will start with their core MSN nursing classes first and then move into your concentrations. We love that this program works with our students by not having set mandatory login times or live lectures. If there is a lecture, it's recorded for you to view at your convenience. You will have your syllabus, 
with your weekly assignments to reference, as well as the support of Wilk's amazing faculty. Our Master's of Science in Nursing program with a focus in Family Nurse Practitioner is a two year and one semester program. This program also has 584 clinical hours divided into three separate terms. We also have a one two day campus visit for your advanced health assessment and a clinical residency that the faculty member would come to your place of work and or clinical or you have the choice to visit the faculty's place of work as well. It's a total of 43 credits in this program, and the total tuition per credit hour is currently $728. So the total tuition for the Master's of Science in Nursing with a focus in Family Nurse Practitioner is $31,304. There is an application fee of $35. However, we are waiving your application for you by using the code NURSING in your application. Wilkes does require a tuition deposit of $300, which is non-refundable. This tuition deposit does confirm your acceptance into the program and is applied to your first semester's tuition. Wilkes Master's of Science in Nursing with a focus in adult gerontology primary care nurse practitioner program is two years. It also has 500 clinical hours, a one two-day campus visit for your advanced health assessment, and then an additional one to two day clinical residency at your place of work or clinical, or you have the option to visit the faculty's place of work. The total number of credits for this program is 40, and the current tuition per credit hour is $728 with a total tuition of $29,120. The application fee is $35. Again, using the code nursing will waive that application fee for you. Wilkes still does require a tuition deposit of $300, which is non-refundable. The tuition deposit does confirm your acceptance into the program, and it is applied to your first semester's tuition. Our final Master's of Science in Nursing program with a focus in psychiatric mental health nurse practitioner program is two years and one semester. This program also has 500 clinical hours and a two-day campus visit for your advanced health assessment an additional one to two day clinical residency where the faculty member would come to your place of work and or clinical, or you would go to the faculty's place of work for an observation. The total program credits is 42 credit hours and the total tuition per credit hour is currently $728. The total current tuition is $30,576. This does not include additional fees, for example, for books, travel to campus, as well as your clinical clearances. Your admissions counselor would be more than happy to review the additional fees with you. The application fee is $35, but again, when prompted to have a waiver, please type in nursing and that will waive the $35 application fee for you. And the tuition deposit is $300, which is non-refundable. This tuition deposit will confirm your acceptance into the program. It is applied to your first semester's tuition. I would like to take some time to discuss the RN to MSN program, which is typically designed for nurses who hold an associate's level degree. In this particular program, there are three intakes per year. So our starting semesters typically run January, May, and August. Our semesters on average are 12 weeks, with the exception being the very first semester, which is a 15 week semester. On average, students will take two courses per semester. In this particular program, there are three bridge courses, which are usually taken within the first two semesters of the program. After those classes are completed, students will then jump right into their master's level nursing courses. There are nine core MSN courses, and the concentrations will follow after that. We will discuss further the different concentrations in a minute, but one thing I did want to point out that a lot of students do really like about the structure of this program is the flexibility. You will not find any set login times or have any live lectures. I would like to talk more about the different concentration areas that we offer for our RN to MSN program. The first one being the family nurse practitioner focus. A family nurse practitioner is an advanced practice registered nurse 
who provide a wide range of family-focused health care services to patients of all ages, including infants, adolescents, adults, and seniors. In this particular program, this is a nine-semester program, and it is just shy of three years to complete. There are 584 clinical hours, which typically fall the last year of the program, to complete. There are two requirements for residencies here. The first one is a two-day consecutive day campus visit, which is part of our advanced health assessment course. The second requirement is a one to two day clinical residency, which could take place at a faculty member's place of employment or a faculty member may come to your place of employment. But that residency is not until the end of the program. There are 54 total credits required for this program. Tuition per credit is at $728, which brings your current tuition then to a total of $39,312. Plus, additional fees and books would not be included. There is an application fee of $35, However, we are offering the opportunity to waive that application fee by simply adding the word nursing where it asks for the waiver code in your application. There will be a non-refundable $300 tuition deposit that's due upon acceptance. This deposit does confirm your acceptance and is applied towards your first semester's tuition. Our next NP focus concentration is our adult gerontology primary care nurse practitioner. Adult gerontology nurse practitioners treat adolescents, adults, and the elderly. In other words, they see patients ages 13 and over. This age group forms a majority of the U.S. population right now, which makes opportunity as a nurse practitioner endless. This particular program is just shy of two and a half years to complete and usually runs eight total semesters. There are 500 total clinical hours needed to complete this program. And like our family nurse practitioner program, there are two residency requirements. The first is the two day campus visit for the health assessment the other is the clinical residency, which can be completed either at a faculty's place of employment or we may come to your place of work. There are 51 total credits required for this program. Current tuition is at $728 per credit, which brings your current total tuition to $37,128. Our application fee is $35. However, you can add the word nursing to the option in your application that asks for a waiver code. Our tuition deposit, non-refundable, $300. This does confirm your acceptance and is applied towards your first semester's tuition. Our final track is our psychiatric mental health nurse practitioner focus. This particular program will help you acquire the skills in completing comprehensive mental health assessments, individual, group, family therapies to treat your patients properly. This will help you fulfill the nation's growing need for psychiatric and mental health care. This particular program is just shy of three years to complete. It does run nine total semesters. Again, there are breaks in between those semesters. There are 500 total clinical hours that are required for this program. And there are, again, two residency requirements. The first residency is the two-day campus visit for the Advanced Health Assessment course. The other residency is the clinical residency, which could take place at either your place of employment or a faculty member's place. The program is a total of 53 credits and tuition per credit hour is again at $7.28 per credit, which brings your current tuition to $38,584.
where it's just a reminder, additional fees and books would not be included. Again, there is the application fee of $35. However, you have that option right now by adding nursing, where it asks for a waiver code in your application to waive that application fee. The tuition deposit, once again, $300, non-refundable. It is applied towards your first semester's tuition. Is online right for me? Do you like to work independently? With a traditional class, you know that any question you may have during the lesson typically is answered either during the class or at the end of the class period. In this particular program, what you will find is the classes are asynchronous, which means you may not receive an answer to your question a few minutes after you submit it. Are you comfortable without having live lectures? The flexibility of this program allows you to be able to customize study times around your schedule, work, family. So keep in mind that though you will have instructors and you will have classmates, you will not have live lecture times. Are you comfortable with technology? One of the perks of being a student here at Wilkes University is we do offer a free online orientation course that starts roughly four weeks prior to the start of the term. That course is designed to help you get acclimated with the learning management system and its functionality. This way you feel more comfortable getting started with your classes since you already had an opportunity to get familiar with that environment. Do you have uninterrupted time for school? In an environment like this, it is essential to have opportunity at home or at work to break away from the craziness, the responsibilities of your daily um, ins and outs. So it is important to be able to block out time where you will not be interrupted so that way you can fully dedicate yourself towards your schoolwork. Are you self-motivated and organized? This also ties into being solutions focused. It is essential to have time blocked out, of course, to be able to dedicate towards your studies, but you also want to ensure that you're organized in a sense where you are able to jot down notes, add to calendars, times, due dates for when your assignments will need to be submitted. Do you have regular access to a computer and internet? Your phone and your tablet are not going to be enough. For instance, here at Wilkes, we use Remote Proctor Now, which is an online software you will be able to download towards your, on your computer and therefore take all of your quizzes, exams right from your own computer. Tablets, phones, hybrids are not compatible with Remote Proctor Now, so it will be essential that you do have regular access to a computer and, of course, the Internet. Solutions Focused. This is a program that will teach you how to think independently and to think on your feet. As you know, as a nurse practitioner, that will be a requirement to be able to make decisions, draw solutions regarding your patient's quality. Our student services team is here to assist you before classes start until graduation. They have a toolbox of items to help you throughout your program. So from classroom navigation, adding additional classes, leave of absence, they are a quick connection to your professors as well. They also take the stress out of registration and will make sure that you are registered for each term. Please get to know your student services advisor. They are a wonderful Wilkes resource to you. The clinical placement team is here to assist you with finding preceptors. They will reach out to you approximately three to four months before your first clinical to start helping you with sourcing locations for your clinicals. They will also try to place you within 40 miles of your zip code to ensure that you still have a good work, home, and life balance. And you have many options with clinicals, ranging from telehealth medicine to using your current hospital or clinic for placement. The team is here to work for you, but I can't stress enough that it is imperative that when they connect with you, reach back out to them because they want to start working for you right away. I would like to spend some time discussing some options in terms of financing your education. Wilkes University understands your education is an investment towards your future 
and we therefore offer several different options to help you fund your investment. The first option is through the free application for federal student aid, also referred to as the FAFSA. In order to be eligible for the FAFSA, you will first need to create and complete a FAFSA application. You can find this by visiting fafsa.ed.gov. You do want to ensure that you are completing the correct FAFSA application year. You can easily check with our financial aid department or you can simply contact your admissions counselor. You will also want to ensure that you have added the Wilkes School Code to your FAFSA application or we will not have accessibility to your FAFSA. When you first apply for FAFSA, you should receive an email from Federal Student Aid just to notify you that your FAFSA is being processed. You may receive an additional email from Federal Student Aid letting you know that your SAR or Student Aid report is ready to be viewed. In your Student Aid report, it should give you some type of an indication of what you might be eligible for through Federal Student Aid. Please keep in mind as a graduate level student, the only thing that you are applying for in terms of funding would be student loans. In order for our school to fully complete your financial aid, there are additional documents that will be needed. Before we get into those additional documents, I do want to ensure that you are aware that you will receive an award from Wilkes as long as you have completed the correct FAFSA. However, you will not receive an award until you are a registered student. So definitely keep your eye on your email after you apply for federal student aid because you should be receiving something from federal student aid that will give you an idea of what your eligibility might be. Now, in order to fully package your financial aid or in order to have funds dispersed to the school, you will need to complete an NPN, which is also referred to as the master promissory note, and you will need to complete a loan entrance counseling form, which is called an LEC. Those may not be the only two documents that are needed. However, rest assured if there are additional documents or information needed in order to fully package your financial aid, our financial aid office will be sure to make you aware. They are there to help guide you and support you through the whole financial aid process. Another very popular way of investing in your education could be through tuition reimbursement or tuition assistance. I would strongly advise reaching out to your HR department or education department or manager at your place of employment to find out more about any possible reimbursement or assistant programs. You do want to reach out to them early because a lot of assistance programs do have hard deadlines and there may be additional information that you would need to provide them in order to complete your application for reimbursement at your employer. Another way of investing your education is through possible military benefits. We have a fantastic military benefits department here that will help you understand what you might be eligible for, but they will also help provide you guidance in terms of any paperwork needed to complete the benefit eligibility. Another way of investing in your education, if you are not eligible for reimbursement or do not want to use student loans, is payment plans. Wilkes offers interest-free payment plans, which what those payment plans are divided into is usually fall and spring are divided into five payments each. Summer, we would bill then three times. So in order to apply for that, you would need to be a registered student. You also will need to have an invoice created as well. There is a $25 fee every time you apply for a payment plan, so you can expect a $25 fee every semester. It's a pleasure for me to introduce my colleagues and the admissions family to you. Uh, I'm in the top left, 
and my colleague Kelly Byrne, Sam Montoya, and Denise Hayes. We work as a wonderful team to assist you as your point of contact until classes start. I'm sure by now you are ready to start the next steps after hearing all of the wonderful information and the program details that Wilkes has to offer you. We are excited you've attended this webinar and would like to invite you to take the next steps in the admissions process. Please schedule a time to speak with your admissions counselor. In the meantime, you are welcome to fill out an application and upload a current resume. This should take no more than 10 minutes. You will also be requesting transcripts from your last conferred degree only. Complete the admissions application acknowledgement form, which reviews clinical placement and student services expectations. We are here as a support for you, and if you have any questions, we are happy to speak with you at any time. You also can schedule an appointment, you can text, you can email, and call. Our counselors are available and happy to assist you. Okay, thank you everyone again for joining us today. We really appreciate it. Um, hopefully that was a lot of great information and we are now gonna go to the live Q&A session. So I have Kelly and Kelly here, of course, who just walked through all this information with you and they're gonna answer any questions that you have. And I see some that have already come through the chat. So thanks again for submitting those questions. And let's start with the first one, which is a pretty important one, is when is the next application deadline, ladies? Absolutely, I can take that one. So we actually just extended our application deadline uh, for our MSN program uh, until November 29th, and the next term starts January 18th. Excellent. So just a little bit over a month away for that next application deadline. And as a follow-up question, and certainly relates to this, someone is asking, um, looks like Jenny is asking, how long is the application process take? When should I get started? I can take this one if you'd like. <laughs> the application process, it's a smooth one and we're with you and support you the entire way. Um, you may get your information in. So for example, the application and your resume in and you request your transcripts. It's just, it can get a little stuck when schools don't send back your transcripts in a timely manner. So that can keep your application from moving forward to completion. So it's just really important to stay on top of your application um, and in following up with the school, uh, making sure that they've submitted your, sent your transcripts over to us as well. So we'd like the process to stay within two weeks. That's a great timeline for yourself. Um, and we're here for you if you have questions uh, with that as well. Thank you. Uh, we have another question. Uh, someone is asking if you can clarify, there was a bullet point on the financial aid side, and I believe it actually said, if you do not have plan to use financial aid, there's no need to apply. Can you all clarify that, that point? Definitely. So if you're not planning on utilizing financial assistance, there, there isn't any need to apply for it then. So if you have other means in place, our financial aid office can assist you with that as well, in case you're interested in taking out private loans. Um, also, you can speak with an admissions counselor here. Thank you very much. Uh, we have another question. This one, um, can you confirm the GPA requirements for both programs, please? Kelly, do you want, oh, we do like to see, um, we, we actually, we want to talk to all students individually. Um, we do like to see a 3.0 GPA, um, since we do not require letters of recommendation or any type of standardized testing GMAT GRE. So um, it is based a lot on your grades, as well as your resume. So we want to make sure that that's robust as well. So someone, um, if someone is very close to that GPA, should they reach out and talk to you specifically? Yes, please. We would love to chat with you further about that. Um, there's always situations and we'd like to treat each student as an individual and what was going on in their life at that time. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, looks like here we also have questions about um, how do I know if the program is available in my state? I can take that Go one. Ahead, Cal. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So we have an interactive uh, map actually on our website where if you hover over it, it'll tell you exactly what programs are authorized in what state. Um, you can also reach out to the admissions office. We have that information as well. Excellent. Thank you. Let's see here. Um, up on our next question, uh, can you please remind me what the tuition uh, cost was for each program? 
Sure, I can take that one. So it's $7.28 per credit, and it all depends on if you are applying to the RN to MSN, so for individuals for the associate's degree to the MSN, and it also depends on which concentration track you're going to take as well. So I would advise call the admissions office and we can we can let you know which, what's available, especially if you're between a couple of concentrations and haven't made your mind up on what NP to go with. Perfect. Thank you. Um, let's see here. Can someone, this is from, it looks like Carrie. Uh, can you talk about clinical placement services again? Um, I want to confirm she's asking if Wilkes does provide those services and we do. So I'll let you guys go into that. I can go ahead. Um, we do have a wonderful clinical placement team, and that's all they do is start sourcing locations for our students. So they do reach out to you in advance. Uh, typically, it's like 15 weeks prior to your first clinical. They'll ask you, hi, do you have a place that you have in mind that are you using your current place of work? Do you need us to help start sourcing locations? They'll help you with the paperwork as well. Make sure that your insurance is taken care of, you're clinically cleared. So that team is dedicated just to support you as a student. That's awesome. Thank you. Uh, let's see here. Next question is, um, can you repeat the application fee? I know this one. It was $35, but with your code nursing, capital N, you can have that waived. Isn't that right? Yes. Use that code. <laughs> <laughs> And it looks like here, um, someone is also asking, it looks like there might be two applications on the page. I'll take this one as well. Mm -hmm. You are correct. When you go to that application link, you are gonna see two different links. There's one for the undergraduate program, which is the accelerated bachelor's of nursing. And then there's the one the right below it for the graduate nursing programs. So for these two programs in particular, the RN to MSN and the MSN. So you will select that application, which is the second one. And and begin that process online. Yes. Let's see, we have another question. Uh, someone is again uh, confirming that the three concentrations available are available for each program. So for both RN to MSN and MSN. Absolutely, yes. Wonderful. Um, I love these questions, these are great. I know, everybody's got a lot of questions, which is good. Uh, let's see here. Again, the, the application deadline is 11:29, and and like Kelly and Kelly said, we do recommend that you start that application process um, as early as possible, just so you don't feel rushed. Um, it really is not a, a too time intensive, but to gather all your materials. And in fact, if one of you ladies, will you go through really quick the materials needed again as they start that application process? Sure, I can do that. So it would be your application, which does take about five to 10 minutes. You would upload a current resume. You want to make sure what's in your resume matches what is in your application. And then you would request your transcripts from your last conferred degree. Uh, and then you would also fill out what's called an admissions application acknowledgement form, which really is just reviewing clinical uh, placement information. So you're initialing and signing and sending that back. The financial aid is the last step, and that's an option, again, if you are choosing to use, but that's not a part of the application process. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, let's see here. Um, this is another question. If I was, I was previously previously accepted into a fall 2020 class, but was unable to start at that time. Can my transcript transfer over into a new application? And I can take that one. So it might actually be able to transfer over to a new application. So if we have it on file, which more than likely we probably still have your transcripts on file since it was just fall of 2020. I um, mean, if that's the case, the application process should be smooth sailing for you since we more than likely have a lot of the documents already on file that you would need have to have in place. Perfect, and that was from Carrie. So Carrie, if you have a chance and want to reach out, um, the one, one of the ladies, Kelly, Kelly, Sam, or Denise, <laughs> would love to help you out with that. So, great question. Thank you. All right, let's see here. Uh, can you confirm the, the start date? I know we talked about the application deadline is 11-29, so when would classes actually start? Give us that start date one more time. January 18th is when classes start. So, that's a good month. It gets you through the holidays. You've got well into January. 
hopefully everybody, if you have small kids, they're back in school. So we try to give you some time there to recover from all the holiday madness. Yes. If I could go back real quick to the application, just make sure this time of year it is kind of sensitive with other schools because they do close for fall breaks. So mm -hmm. you want to make sure you do start the application sooner than later and request your official transcripts. Campuses, like I said, close for the holidays. and We want to make sure uh, that you have everything in, in a timely manner. That is a great point, especially with our application deadline falling on the 29th. That's right mm -hmm. after that Thanksgiving week. Mm -hmm. And I bet a lot of schools are probably going to be closed most, if not all of that week yeah. like before. So and there's actually, fall breaks in there now too. So yep, absolutely. Yeah. Right. It's, this is a busy time of year. We've got fall <laughs> breaks, we've got holidays, we've got to sign up for school. It is. <laughs> but we're here to help you. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Uh, let's see here. What other questions can I answer? Um, okay, the financial aid, we did talk about that. R right. If you don't plan on using financial aid, you, you really don't need to go through the process of filling all that out if you have a secondary um, op option and way to finance your education. Um, there is one question here about traveling to Wilkes. Will I have to travel to Wilkes if, if this is an online program? I'll let you ladies talk about the resident, sure. the quick residencies. Sure, absolutely. I, I can definitely uh, speak upon that. So as far as the residencies go, there are two residencies for either program, either the RN to MSN or the MSN program. For the MSN program, the first residency typically falls the sixth or I'm sorry, the fourth semester, and the RN to MSN usually falls the sixth semester. Um, what that first residency is, it's a two-day on-campus visit, usually falls like the 10th or 11th week of that semester. The semesters are usually 12 weeks long. What that is, is that's where you would come to the campus and you're performing a head-to-toe health assessment in our renowned simulation center. Honestly, the last couple of semesters, we did not have anyone come to campus because of everything with the pandemic. So we just kind of have to wait and see how everything works out by the time that you would have that first residency. And then the second residency is not a campus visit. The second residency for either program is a day or two uh, visit to either a faculty's place of employment or they may come to your place of employment. And they were doing that, um, they were doing it via Zoom, Cal, the health assessment. So you, that way you didn't have to come oh, for the COVID. Yeah, right. so you still had the health assessment. It was just mm -hmm. done via Zoom for pandemic. Right. But you want the opportunity to go to campus. It's such a cool experience. I mean, the lab has been redone. It's phenomenal. It's open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It's just, a, it's a neat opportunity. And you get one-on-one -on -one time with your professor. So it's cool networking. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And Wilkes, is, it's a beautiful campus too, especially this time of year. It's gorgeous. So all the fall colors. Uh, let's see here. Next question. A couple of these repetitive. Let me go through and make sure we get a new one. Um, okay. Oh, um, if you ladies could um, get, go over, list the three concentrations one more time. Someone is making sure they have all the right three concentrations here. Sure. Adult gerontology, family nurse practitioner, and psychiatric mental health. Now, I think there was some confusion on the psychiatric mental health and which which one that was because there are there are other psych programs out in the world, uh, but Wilkes specifically is the psychiatric mental health program. Yes, and I'll lead for you to be able to sit for the national board certification. And actually, that is a follow up question. Someone is asking about uh, uh, board board certification and if we have any information on Wilkes and the boards. I know we have excellent pass rates. If you want to talk about those. We are above the national average, which is 85%. I don't have this past terms yet, but it is above national average and 85 is the national average. Mm -hmm. And I know right now too, um, if anybody out there follows the uh, Passing School of Nursing Facebook page, they just had a bunch of boards um, that were passed. So uh, practically every day they were posting um, a student that they were highlighting and they're and the passing the boards and congratulations. So it was a really exciting time. It was a, a really big success. That makes our day. That is awesome. Yeah, so good. Um, talk a little bit more about, um, someone is asking for you to clarify the statements that we had back on the online slide where we specifically said no set login times. Talk about that experience and what does that mean and how do we best manage our time? What do we need to do? Absolutely, I can talk about that. So it's an asynchronous environment. 
which means you will not have a set live lecture time. You will not have a live group meeting time. So it's very flexible in that sense, in, in a sense where you can kind of create your own schedule with it. Sure, you're still going to have due dates and deadlines, so you'll want to be uh, cognizant of that. But it's nice because, you know, if you work night shift or you work day shift, it doesn't matter. I mean, you can log in when it's convenient for you. You can focus on your studying when, you know, you're, you had your cup of coffee and you're ready to go. So, um, but yep, it is definitely a flexible program. So you will not have any live lecture times. And that also got me thinking, um, for those that are interested, we do have a student that gave us um, the, a, pretty much like a testimonial of their experience for Will, because his name was Craig. He's in Oklahoma, and he is an MSN student who participates in the psych and mental health concentration. And he is a working nurse. He is a father and a husband, and he's got all of the things, but was able to juggle it with Wilkes and was really happy with this experience. So we definitely have his information up on the website if you'd like to read and see what his experience was as a working dad and how he makes that work. And actually, one of you ladies, maybe we can drop the link uh, to the website in the chat for everybody so they can go take a look at that if they want to. It's got some really good information, and it's nice to see how someone is tackling this in a real world environment when you have to do all of the things you know gone are the days when you can just go to school or you can just work or just be a parent you have to be able to do everything at once but luckily wilkes has a really good support system with those student success advisors the clinical placement team we try to do a lot of the heavy lifting for you which is very helpful and Erin, there was a question regarding a clarification on FAFSA that I want to um, discuss for a second. So the question was regarding FAFSA, um, and we were talking about being awarded something. So mm -hmm. what that usually means is once you're registered, once you've applied for your free application for student aid, and you've entered our school code so that way we have access to your FAFSA, you'll receive um, a award letter from us. What that award letter is, that just breaks down your eligibility. Um, and it also will map out like cost of attendance as well, just so you can see how much you're eligible for versus what the cost of attendance is and so forth. So um, that typically means that's what FAFSA is awarding you, the federal government. So to answer your question, that's what the award letter is. Thank you. And Erin, I actually saw a question too about the uh, fall semester 2022 deadline. Oh, um, yeah. And that's, I think that's a really great question. But what's different with Wilkes is we work with students one term at a time. We want to give you the time and attention. We're just not a school that says, yes, 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 come on in, come on in, we'll take you and then forget about you. We want to work with you through the whole process. So you feel comfortable and set up for success with everything that you're doing. So Currently, we are helping students for the January term. And once the December rolls around, we'll open up our May term. And then we'll, once our January students start, obviously we're always still here for you, but then we'll start working on our summer term, which is May. And then we'll work on our fall term, fall 2022. So hang tight, keep in touch with your advisor. Um, we still wanna communicate and talk with you, but know that nothing is due right now for any other term except for our January 18th term. That's, it was a great question though. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you. Thanks for clarifying that, that's great. Uh, let's see here if I can answer any more questions. Um, oh, we do have another question. Um, remind us about the tuition deposit and I'm, they're clarifying also that you, we did say that it is applied toward that first semester. Yes, the tuition deposit is applied for the first semester. So what happens if you are accepted into the program? Um, typically, you'll have an electronic acceptance letter. Within the electronic acceptance letter is the link for the tuition deposit. And it does state in there that the tuition deposit is typically due about two weeks after acceptance. Mm -hmm. um, but with that, it is applied directly towards your first semester's bill. So you'll see it taken off the invoice. Got it, got it. And was that, and just so I make sure I have it right, was it $300? And that was for both programs? Each program was a $300 tuition? Yes, correct. Mm -hmm. okay. Got it. Um, someone is asking how quickly after, you know, getting, a, if they're accepted, admitted, all of that good stuff, when will orientation and all of those things start? Well, would that start on the 18th of January? Will they have anything before that they need to do? Talk about that in-between process between accepted, admitted, and waiting to actually start class on the 18th. Sure, no, that's a great question. So once a student is accepted, 
um, they will have to pay their $300 tuition deposit. Um, and once they pay their tuition deposit, they'll be welcome to attend what's called a welcome webinar that um, will introduce you to your student services team. And that kind of gets the ball rolling. Um, then you can start working, still continue working on your financial aid. Um, you can, you'll be registered after that point as well. And the orientation is going to start probably mid-December, and that'll be pretty much a month long. You'll get an email about it as well. There's always communication going back and forth. Mm -hmm. The orientation I love, so I'd love to give a quick shout out to this, how they've done this. It's this educational sandbox that is set up where you cannot break anything. So have fun, learn how to post, mm -hmm. learn how to take a test with the RPN now, um, learn your APA, freshen up on that, um, post to your professor, type your bio. This is, and it's a whole month long and students who have participated in this and are really dedicated to the process of orientation, again, log on whenever you want, they're successful because they're not walking into class on January 18th going, Mm, where do I do my bio? Where mm -hmm. do I log in? Um, it's it's really sets you up for success to be able to log in a class at first day and say, I know where I'm going. I know where to post. Let's get this going. Um, so really, I encourage you when your advisor reaches out to you about orientation and when it opens, log on, take advantage of it. Take advantage of everything that's available to you in that orientation. It does set you up for success in the classroom. And that's a month long. It'll actually go until that first day of class, which is January 18th. Oh, okay, gotcha, gotcha. Yep. And and talk about that. I'm glad you brought this up. This was a, a good thing to review because talk about sort of the handoff or a transition that they're going to have when they go from working with you all as an enrollment advisor to the student success advisor. What does that look like? We always want to be here for our students, but student success team, they are wonderful. They work by appointment only and you'll get their login or their uh, appointments uh, addresses and so forth. But really after classes start, you do want to transition chatting with them because they're the ones that are going to help you um, register you for classes. Um, if you have a concern or issue, you need to take a leave of absence, something's going on in your life. They're your connection to campus. So they're really here for you as your advocates until you graduate. Again, we're always here for you, but they're the ones that are going to see you through the program, as well as clinical placement will jump in there as well and help you with their clinical placement services as well. Got it. I hope that so answered you... their question. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it did. I mean, so okay. we do, you do have some specialized contacts here when you, when you go through the Wilkes process, but that is for ease of process on our, on, not only on Wilkes sides, but for your side as well too. So, you know, you have yeah one person that's going to work with you on those clinical placement services, one person that's going to help you get ready for class and get things going. And then, of course, you all as the admissions team, getting that application in, all any that resume, you know, all of that stuff, um, any questions they have, you're the go-to for that, for sure. Yeah, and what's nice is student services, they're a whole team, so you don't have to work with just one person. Everybody will have access to your file to be able to assist you in the student services department. So again, take advantage of, you know, their email once it's sent to you, but their, um, if you need to request an appointment, that's the best way to go. So yeah, everyone's here to support you. Excellent. That's great. And it looks like here, um, one more question. Oh, this one was actually about the technology question. So you all made a point to mention that a phone and a tablet are not enough, um, that this needs to be, you need to have like a laptop or desktop co computer to be successful. <laughs> Definitely. So with Remote Proctor now, which is the testing software that we use, it's not compatible with a hybrid phone, tablet. So you're absolutely going to want to have a working um, PC, Mac, whatever. I mean, the system is fine, uh, but you'll definitely want that for sure. Um, one other thing, too. So I did want to make mention there's an app you can actually download on your phone for the online learning environment that we use. So if you want to quickly check to see you know, if somebody had responded to your post or if you want to read a response, you can do that. So you could still take school with you, um, but as far as like testing, you'll want to have an actual computer system set up. Okay, uh, and so like for lectures and such, um, get, is this something that they could you know, listen to a lecture in the car or on their way to work and things like that? It's amazing. Yeah, uh -huh. it's really, and you know, there's no live lectures, but if there is a lecture and it's recorded for you, you mm -hmm. know, um, th there's so many cool features with that that you can use with this app, which you'll get that information once you're accepted, so you're not bombarded now, but yeah, there's so many cool features with that app. Excellent. That's great. Let's see, I think we might be wrapping up. Uh, give us that application deadline one more time. Someone's asking for that.
the application. Yeah, the 29th. <laughs> it's all right. Yeah, the 29th is the application deadline. So just a little bit over a month away. Um, of course, with that Thanksgiving holiday and things coming up, we know it'll, it'll get here sooner than later. So um, they, the ladies recommend you start that application process because if you do have any questions, they'll be able to answer any of those and help you go through that process and make sure that you have everything in by that deadline. And then uh, hopefully confirm your acceptance into the program, which would be great. Um, for those of you that did attend the webinar, yes, we will be sending an email to you. Um, so the email that you use to register, we will be sending out a copy of this webinar. So you'll have access to this recording. You'll have all the information here, like the contact information, application link, et cetera. Um, so you'll be able to reference this um, as, as you need to. So thank you, Steve. That was a great question. Um, and let your advisor know that you did attend this. That's great, too, because we do want to have an interview process, but we also don't want to just keep repetitive. We want to make sure we're meeting your needs and your questions. So definitely let your advisor know that you have attended and we're glad you did. Yes, really, this was um, such a great turnout and we want to thank you guys for taking the time out of your busy day. We know there is still a lot going on. We thought 2021 was going to be better. It's almost getting there, guys. We're getting a little bit better. So, um, but special, special thank you to all of you who are currently in healthcare and are already working nurses to some degree. We know it's been it's been a year and it's it looks it's going to get better. It's just taking some time, but we Wilkes is really appreciative of, of everything that the nurses do um, and, and nursing staff and, and things out there. So we, we certainly appreciate your dedication as well. And coming up in November, actually, I believe it's starting around November 7th is National Nurse Practitioner Week. So be looking for Wilkes. We do some special shout outs on our social media platforms and the websites and stuff just again to show appreciation for all those healthcare workers and how much we value them and especially nurses. Um, and the nurses that we have here at Wilkes. Would you ladies like to add any last minute points? No, I just want to say thank you so much, like Erin was saying, for taking the time out of your really busy day. Uh, we are so appreciative of everything that you do every day. I know a lot of you are working long hours, extra shifts, picking up where others can't. So we do appreciate everything that you're doing. It is amazing hearing your story. I could cry now, but hearing your stories and what you're all going through, it's wonderful and inspiring. And, and that's why we want to help you. So however we can make this easy for you, we want to, we're here for you and we appreciate you. Well, thank you all so much for joining. We hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Please reach out with any questions um, following up the email that you received with the webinar. And again, thank you for your time. Have a good one. Bye.